know? How do you know you're a pioneer? How do you know? What hap- what be you, you look around your life and you're what what's happening? Something has to break, something has to shift. You you just know something inside of you needs to get out. I remember the moment for me. There's probably many moments. But I was a worship pastor at a church and it was amazing season. I loved it. Yet there was something else that was just, I couldn't stop thinking about. There was this prophetic flow that was inside me that I was keeping under wraps. And I was just, I could so easily just keep doing the same thing I was doing. But there's, there was moments in worship where this prophetic flow would come out and people were like, what are you doing? You know, what's happening there? I'm like, I have no clue. And it, one day the Lord said to me, when will you step into the fullness of the calling I have for your life? And the fear of the Lord came over me so strong, realizing that if I wasn't careful and if I didn't follow what he was wanting to do in me, I would serve man instead of God and call it kingdom. And these critical moments that we face when we face these uncomfortable, I guess, these these intersection moments in our calling that we have to choose sometimes something that's good something that we can do in our own strength and it's by all outward appearances it's it's okay we have to realize when the holy spirit's shifted when he's moved are we going to move and follow with him or are we going to choose the comfort for me it was i I love standing behind my guitar i love being the worship pastor i could hide behind my guitar i had confidence when i when i would speak with a guitar in front of me because it was is different But then when you take the guitar away and I went through a season of everything just being stripped away and then the Lord just hands me, well, it wasn't a mic. He just said, I want you to begin encouraging people. That's really vulnerable. That's really scary. But yet we all face these moments where the Lord will actually take us in a different way and he'll detour us. And then he says, well done, good and faithful, good and faithful servant for going where I'm going. And that is what a pioneer pioneer is. It's choosing to follow him when it's unpopular, uncomfortable, and painful to do so. Well, when people in your life that love you Mm -hmm. and you trust them and they're good people hearing from the Lord, how do you, how did you like put away, you don't have to put away everything you've learned from them, but just like their voice telling you what to do. how, How did you step into that place where, you were able to press it past that envelope. It's sort of a wall or a veil, yeah. like pressing into seeing something. How would you, how, you do to do that? That was very uncomfortable. We went through a season where everyone in our lives backed away from us. It was about four years of our life. Christy, my wife and I, our community left. We were a part of a massive church in our city. We were blacklisted in our city as well. Um, when we started our ministry, I couldn't go anywhere without people saying, oh, no, hey, we won't have anything to do with you, simply for saying yes to what we are called to do. Family didn't understand. What's wrong with you? What are you doing that for? Um, Yet that still small voice was like, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I think probably the first year of those four years was really painful. You know, you tend to get bitter. You tend to kind of take that place of like feeling like David in, in the cave. Why is Saul chasing me? Maybe, maybe you're thinking about the same thing right now. Why is this happening to me? Why are these family members after me? Why? And you get into that place of, of unforgiveness, even and bitterness and feeling like, God, why would you do? Why would you give me this calling? It's too big for me. And then suddenly you begin to see why. Suddenly you begin to see the lives that are being healed and set free because you're choosing to be faithful to something that was not what you would have chosen. Mm-hmm. It is the new thing that God's doing. And without even realizing, you were listed in this new thing and got to be a part of it. And so my encouragement to the body of Christ right now is we're in that place. Do you believe we're in that uncomfortable place in the church right now? We're in that uncomfortable place where the Lord is actually, he's breaking down walls. This is personal and also corporate. He's breaking down walls. He's He's challenging mindsets and he's, he's wanting us to celebrate the victories and the different things that he's done, but he's wanting us to come together as one people and to be one voice in the earth. And, and I think what comes with that is we're going to have to get used to different. <laughs> and 
Will we embrace that different when he asks, asks that of us? And embracing him, yeah. it makes it where we begin to see, like he's mm. very strategic. So the way I would do it might be, you know, this and this, but <laughs> he's got a way bigger plan than any of us have ever thought. And I, I feel like I, he's having to redefine for me, even the things in Revelation or what yes. the end looks like. I mean, I've, the closer we get, he's letting us in. You know, yes, we've right. obviously been on a need to know basis. But, um, <laughs> but when we step into that place where you guys were, Tell us, I want to encourage them because I believe this has been hitting something in you going, oh man, that's me, that's me, that's this. Tell them what it's like on the other side of the break. They're on the other side of your obedience. Yes. What's what's <laughs> happening with you guys now? I want to say there is another side. People ask me all the time, is there another side? Oh, this is all I've known. This pioneering journey of risk and and following the Lord, it feels like it costs every. It does. It costs everything, and I won't lie to you. It does. You know, there's that scripture you know, about um, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, but we love not our lives unto death, and that really means will you follow Him at all costs? See, many of you have known the cost. Many of you have known that you're like Nate. You're not telling me anything I don't know. I know the cost. It's cost me on my body. It's cost me in, in, in just in relationships, in family. It's cost me in finances. It's cost me in every area. Will there be another side? There is another side. And let me tell you, there, the God, will, God will get you to this place that, actually, I'll tell you in this way. A friend of mine said, you know what it's like to pioneer, Nate? And I said, what is it like? And he says, it's like, it's like you're being faithful and you, you got your, you're up against the door. You know, the promise is on the other side of that door. And you, you're, on, you're, just, you're worshiping and you're like, oh, when will I get to the other side? But I'm faithful. I'm worshiping you. I'm, I'm trusting you. One day you wake up and you're on the other side. Mm. It was not by your own doing. You had to surrender to the worship season and realize it wasn't a wasting season. But one day, suddenly you wake up and you are on the other side of that. And I want to encourage you today. The enemy has been lying to people out there saying, Nate, I've been on this journey for a while. I've been in this place where things have been not working. Things have been falling apart. That's actually a massive sign that God's taking you in a new direction sometimes. Uh, you know, and you get to this place one day where you suddenly just go, Jesus, I give this. This is all for you. Jesus, I, I'm, I'm tired of trying to manufacture my own breakthrough. I choose to seek you as my breakthrough. And then suddenly something shifts and you begin to move in the beginning of that breakthrough. I know for us, we're experiencing that. Being here in America is one of our biggest breakthroughs. We battled visas and things for many years. Here we are. Suddenly. A <laughs> so it was suddenly. Last year, can I share this? Yeah, please. Last year, we gave up our visas. We're in Australia. We got stuck back there. And I remember being in my office floor. The Lord said to me, will you give me that? Will you give me that dream? And I said, Lord, this has been a long, this has been a five-year journey. And suddenly we have to forfeit these visas. And he said, yeah, will you give them to me? And that night I, I cried. Like, I've, honestly, so much grief came out of me. This is only July last year. I gave it to him a month later. We got our visas and we're back. Wow. It can, it, I really truly believe the pioneering heart and journey is about surrender to Jesus. And it's like he's teaching the church right now, hey, surrender, like forfeit your old patterns and plans and blueprints. And even a lot of the things that you, your own expectations, give them to me. The hope deferred, the disappointment, give them to me. Surrender afresh and you watch now what I'm going to do. And one day you're going to wake up and you're broken through the other side of something that you never believed you could ever get to the other side of. I truly believe this. How could what I am, or how could what I have, or, or what I'm about, or anything within the power of my hands, how can that serve the kingdom? And at the same time, you know, you're seeing your kids and they're like, they're maybe they're my, my kids, I had moving here, moving there. And I had to come to that place because I love my kids. You know, I love them being around and my grandkids, but I had to come to that place where I was like, how do you need my kids? How do you want my house? I give it to you. And the other day you said, well, you can't give me a house without me returning a hundredfold. I said I would. And I'm like, but that's awesome. But 
I just care about what you want. And it's yeah. like a whole inside shift yeah. that comes out of this place. And there's nothing like it. It's there's a nothing. place with him of walking with mm -hmm. him. And no, you know, probably people haven't been called necessarily to this place all the time. This is a, we're stepping into something we've never seen. Absolutely. And we've got to get used to thinking, okay, I'm ready to see what I've never seen. I know, can you just challenge them to, you've yeah. stepped into that place and seen God move. Would you just challenge them and encourage yeah. them with that? It took a prophet to say to David, get out of that place. And I feel so many people, you, you feel this tug on your heart. There's something in you that's like, I can't just keep doing the status quo, living every day like I have. There's something in me that I'm at a breakout moment, Nate. I'm in this pivotal moment. Something needs to shift in my life. And you've been feeling just almost like that, you know, you're getting up every day and you just, you don't even want to wake up because there is such a heaviness that's trying to overtake you. The Lord is saying to you today, get out from that place, pick up your bed and walk. It's time to get yourself out of the stronghold that you've been living in. And I wanted to simply pray for you. Can I do that? I just pray today that every single thing that's been trying to hold you to an old system, an old season, an old assignment, an old alignment, we've broken off your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And that today you'd say, Lord, I surrender my heart and life to you afresh. I give you my life afresh, Jesus. Whatever it is that you want, I choose today to follow that and I leave behind everything that I've been living to serve you afresh. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Nate. Wow. And thank you, Lord.